Now I've only tried this a couple of times, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. You just sit back, relax, and don't worry about a thing. Make pretend like the wires aren't even really connected to anything. Are you ready? Concentrate on your sister. Concentrate on her name. What's your sister's name? Still haven't gotten my machine sorted out. Still running on about two watts of power. But I suppose it's giving my router and I some quality one-on-one -on -one time. It's quite romantic. I've been playing around with the built-in wizards in Mach 4. These are also available in the hobby version. They come free with the software. Now, I don't know what half the stuff in this list is, but Feeds and Speeds Wizard caught my eye, as did Font Engrave. Let's have a quick look at the Feeds and Speeds calculator, since, well, it's right here in front of us. I personally use G Wizard. I really like it, but that'll set you back about 80 bucks. Sometimes you can get it on sale. And to be quite frank, until recent, I didn't even realize this wizard was built into Mach 4. From the little that I've played with it, the results seem pretty close. Doesn't give you all the information that G-Wizard does, but for the price, this calculator is hard to argue with. There is a milling and turning interface. I'll pick milling, and we'll just walk through it top to bottom. First thing it wants to know is what material we're working with. That seems like a legit question, not too personal. The material database in this isn't what I'd call particularly exhaustive. There are four entries, but as you can see, you can add materials easily enough. I'll leave it at aluminum. Next, it looks like it wants a tool diameter. Let's drop that down to four just for kicks. High speed steel and two flute seem fine. And finally, it looks like the operation type. Let's go with slotting since that had put the most strain on the tool. Engagement is shown as a percentage. 100% is fine. Again, we're slotting. And 50% depth of cut, two millimeters, about 80 thou. I'd buy that. Hit calculate and it suggests 480 millimeters per minute. That's almost 20 inches per minute feed at 12,000 RPM. That's probably a little aggressive for my router on a four millimeter end mill at that depth of cut. I might personally drop that down to, I don't know, 300 millimeters per minute, but it's a good starting point. Handy calculator. Let's get back to the engraving wizard. Now this is really handy. Usually what I'd have to do to engrave is move into fusion, generate text, then have to pick all those little lines to make the toolpaths, hope nothing goes wrong, and export the G-code back here. In this wizard, as long as you don't need to make anything fancy like a V-carved sign with moose antlers for the new lodge down the street, I can do everything right here. I just fill in the text to engrave in the little window that says, well, text to engrave, and then set the cut parameters. The fields to fill out are clearly illustrated on the right. Z position is where the engraving is meant to happen. Depth is how deep we'd like to engrave. Rapid and feed heights, then cut speed and RPM, which is not really relevant in my case as my computer doesn't currently control the spindle speed. Then we get to pick a font. Came with these four built-in fonts. No clue if you can get more, I haven't really looked. Arial and a script font, so it looks like you actually have good handwriting. Straight font, which is basically stick font, like an architectural, mechanical drawing kind of font. You'll see it in a minute. No frills, nothing fancy. And then Times New Roman. Now, Times New Roman is an outline font, so if you pick that, expect it to take longer. Probably twice as long. I'll go with straight font. Now, this wizard looks like it's built to automatically serialize engraved text. So if you were making a series of parts or fixtures, the wizard would increment each serial number by the instructions you set here, either as a prefix or a suffix. I'm going to go with no serial number. This is pretty nice, though, as alternatively, I'd have to go back to Fusion in my case to update the text and export the G-code for each change that I need to make. Looks good. I'll hit Save and Load and Viola. Just like that, there's G-code in Mach 4. That might be hard to see, but over here is the toolpath preview of the G-code we've just loaded. One thing to keep in mind, though, that burnt me a couple times when I started playing with this, is the wizard puts the machine in its G55 offset. So if you hit start and the tool zips off someplace you didn't expect it to, it's probably because you zeroed out in G54 and not G55. From what I understand, it does that to keep from screwing with the parts you might be currently working on. For example, if you just made 10 widgets and you want to stop to engrave them, it switches you automatically into G55 so you don't lose your machine reference in G54. So after you're done engraving, you can go back and keep making million dollar widgets after you're done engraving dollar signs on the batch you just finished. So I make sure to zero my tool in G55 and hit the play button.
Well, there you have it. Easy way to do quick, simple engravings really fast. The only downside? No spell checker.